Welcome to our YouTube channel. In this video we will talk about the 10 things to do in New York. So before starting this video like this video, and subscribe to this YouTube channel for future updates. New York is so large and diversified that you might live here for four lifetimes, and still not see everything the city has to offer. Even deciding where to begin your NYC trip might be difficult. However, we'd want to assist you in narrowing down the seemingly endless number of things to do with your day. These crucial stops will help you catch a glimpse of the city's beating heart, whether you're a local who realizes you haven't thoroughly explored the city's parks and history or an out-of-towner who doesn't know the Met from the MoMA. Number 10. Brooklyn Bridge. When the Brooklyn Bridge was built in 1883, it was the world's longest suspension bridge, stretching 1,595 feet across the East River, and connecting Lower Manhattan to Brooklyn Heights. It's now a historic landmark of the New York City skyline, carrying commuter car traffic below and tourist foot traffic above. Standing in front of arches and rectangles with city skyscrapers rising in the distance, will give you a sense of both grandeur and modesty. Number 9. Coney Island. Coney Island has a reputation for being a circus-worthy tourist trap, and it is. The old-timey pleasures of this coastal American town, though, may surprise you. The food and drinks, especially at Totino's Pizza, Gargiolo's, and Coney Island Brewery, will leave you speechless. Locals and visitors alike congregate on the beach, eat ice cream cones along the promenade, and queue for the famous cyclone roller coaster. The beach and boardwalk, as well as restaurants like Nathan's, are open all year. The amusement park is only open during the summer. Number 8. The High Line. The High Line is an excellent example of what New York City excels at. Repurposing ancient areas to become exactly what you want them to be. New Yorkers flocked in droves when a 1.45 mile long abandoned freight track on Manhattan's West End was converted into an elevated, mixed-use public park in 2009. The High Line is a brilliant piece of landscape architecture that melds paths, benches and chaise lounges with grass, perennials, trees, and bushes in perfect unkempt kempt harmony, rising 30 feet above lively 11th Avenue. Number 7. Central Park. When you enter into Central Park from the busy sidewalks of 59th Street, you won't believe what you're seeing, 693 acres of man-made gardens, meadows, woodlands, and rolling hillsides. You could walk 58 miles if you walk down every route in Central Park. You'll see fountains, monuments, sculptures, bridges, and arches along the road, as well as 21 playgrounds, a winter ice rink, a zoo, and even a castle. However, the four major crosstown thoroughfares, which skillfully disappear into foliage-covered tunnels, are barely noticeable. Number 6. The Cloisters. The Met Cloisters, a division of the Metropolitan Museum of Art is America's only museum dedicated completely to the art and architecture of the Middle Ages, and is located on four acres in northern Manhattan's Fort Tryon Park. The edifice, which views out over the Hudson River, blends five medieval-inspired cloisters into a modern museum structure, offering a historic, contextualized setting against which to see the art. Number 5. Dover Street Market New York. When Dover Street Market first opened its doors in New York in December 2013, hundreds of adorned fashionistas camped out for days outside its Lexington Avenue entrance. Dover Street is a fashion meets art exhibition environment, not merely a luxury department store. Instead of choosing among dresses on a metal rack, featured designers create their own display locations, allowing shoppers to engage with the items in a holistic way that brings them inside the designer's universe. Rose Bakery, a ground-floor cafe, is well worth a visit. Number 4. Whitney Museum of American Art. When the Whitney moved from the Upper East Side to its, much-expanded meatpacking headquarters in 2015, it received a big makeover. It has 50,000 square feet of indoor galleries containing works by Jean Michel, Basquiat Richard Avedon, and Alexander Calder, four outdoor exhibition spaces and terraces, and a Danny Mayer-owned ground-floor restaurant and top-floor bar. Two elevators built by artists connect the floors, albeit slow-moving, crowded ones. Take the stairs instead if mobility isn't an issue, as they provide continuous views of the Hudson River. A set of outside staircases connects the top floors and sculpture terraces, providing spectacular views of the downtown skyline, and a rare opportunity to appreciate art in the open air. Number 3. The Metropolitan Museum of Art. Thanks to forward-thinking shows and a vast permanent collection, the Met has been the cultural epicenter of New York City for nearly a century and a half. The building is a sight to behold, with its Gothic Revival-style structure, famous tiered steps, and Central Park position. 
Step inside the Great Hall, however, and you'll experience the enormous feeling, of possibility and discovery that lies beyond, as a never-ending parade of museum-goers moves in and out. Start with the Temple of Denda, a 2,000-year-old soaring Egyptian temple, if you have little time or companions with limited attention spans, the only complete one in the Western Hemisphere. Number 2. The Strand Bookstore. With its towering stacks of over 2.5 million titles this 93-year-old, bookstore is less of a local hangout and more of a global institution. Given their smart ability to identify the exact title you're seeking for, and propose a book you might not have otherwise picked from the shelves, you could call the Strand's employees tour guides. The store will make you wonder why you haven't read more, and you're unlikely to leave empty-handed. Number 1. The Morgan Library and Museum. Instead of actress, model, influencer, whatever, the Morgan is a museum, library, landmark, historic site, music venue. Rare relics, paintings, and books, some dating back to 4000 BC, may be found inside the multimillionaire's personal library, which has been transformed into a must-see museum and cultural venue. The museum houses one of only 23 original copies of the Declaration of Independence, Mozart's handwritten music for the Hafner Symphony, African-American poet Phyllis Wheatley's collected works, Milton's only extant copy of Paradise Lost and Charles Dickens' manuscript of A Christmas Carol. Here are a few more examples. Statue of Liberty. Liberty Island, a 14-acre expanse of land one mile south of Lower Manhattan, and home to the Statue of Liberty, attracted 4.2 million visitors in 2019. While there is no charge to visit Liberty Island, Statue Cruises charges for a round-trip ferry voyage. The boat also makes a stop on Ellis Island, which is part of the National Park, and includes the Ellis Island National Museum of Immigration, where visitors can look up their families' names in ship manifests. Plan ahead of time if you want to visit the pedestal or crown of the statue. Each day there are just a few hundred tickets available, and they sell out weeks, if not months, in advance. Also, consider how you'll spend the day, Visiting the statue and Ellis Island correctly can take up to six hours. Governor's Island. This 172-acre isle in the center of New York Harbor was inaccessible to the public for nearly two centuries, serving as a military base. During the summer and early fall, anybody can visit Governor's Island's monuments, parks and exhibitions, May through October, seven days a week. All you need is a round-trip ferry ticket and New York residents can ride for free if they present a current state license. Although Governor's Island has an obvious escapist appeal, most visitors come for a memorable event. Music festivals, pop-up restaurants, art exhibits, dance performances, and so on. Click on the link in the description to discover more things to do in New York. Find recommendations from locals, the best hotels, restaurants, and much more. What do you think about this video? Do let us know down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from us again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go.